Hey everybody, take a look at the seemingly simple end game here in front of you. It's actually a lot more complex than it seems, but it demonstrates why a strong knowledge of end game tactics can sometimes rescue your entire game. It's White's turn to play for the win, but what's the correct move in this situation? It seems like White has a strong positional advantage because its pieces are a lot closer to the action, but in reality it's not as easy as it looks. White literally has one single move that will guarantee victory. Every other move in this situation ends the game in a stalemate. So can you find the right move? If you like, pause the video, try the puzzle on your own, and then let's dig in. All right, here we go. So intuitively, your plan here is to approach the black pawn on g6 with either king to f4 or to e5, and then push your own pawn. But unfortunately, the black king's sole mission is to stop your pawn at all costs. If the white king moves to f4 and the black king to c4, then white to f3, black to d3, white to g5, black to e3, and then in f4, now you end up with the black king just waiting to capture on g6. The same thing happens here with king to e5. The game will typically continue with black king to c4, white to f4, king to d3, white to f6, and black to e4 until the black king is waiting with his sword drawn ready to slice your pawn in half. Okay, but what about moving the pawn first? Let's try that. White pawn to f4, then black king to c4, white to e5, black to d3, and the same thing repeats itself once again. So maybe you take things a bit slower by pushing the pawn only one square instead, advancing both your king and your pawn at the same time. But unfortunately, this plan also leads to a draw, because instead of c4, the black king will go to c5, and then white to e5, black to c4, white to f4, and black to d3, tying the game once again. So every move that seems to come naturally leads to a draw. So what is the solution here? Because it's definitely not as simple as it looked like when you first opened this video. So here's what you've actually got to do. As white, you need to shield black's king first. After that, you can go after his pawn. If you want to learn more about this concept in chess, it's called shouldering, and it's extremely effective. So white king has three squares that he can move to. d3, d4, and d5. But which is the correct one? Most would say d5, which unfortunately isn't correct. Black king will go further down the board and won't let you make any progress. Black to b4, white pawn to f4, black to c3, and white mistakenly thinks that he can keep black away here by playing e4, putting a shield on d4, e3, and f2. But black is simply just going to wait for the white king to leave his defense and play d2. White has no way to both defend his pawn and capture the black pawn as well. But if you said d4, then congratulations, that is the correct move, and it's the only move that will guarantee victory for white. After you find this move, the next ones will come pretty naturally. But let's take a look as to why this is the only move that wins the game. Because now, black's path is much too long to the white pawn. He needs to move all the way around the white king, instead of when he was on d5, he could cut through the diagonal. See? Now, if they try to go around the white king to protect their own g-pawn, white can simply cut the black king off while he's on his way king to d4, black king to b4, and now pawn to f4. Black can't do anything in this situation. Another subtle reason for why king to d4 is working over king to d5 is because of the pawn push. Now in the d5 scenario, black has the option to get behind the white pawn by moving king to c3. The difference between king to d5 and the actual solution is that after white moves his pawn to f4, the black no longer has that option to go to c3. See, it leaves him one move behind from being able to successfully pressure the white pawn from the back. The idea of pawn to f4 here is to leave white's pawn closer to the square where the white king is going to capture the black pawn. The idea of blocking off the king here is not enough. See, white has to rely on both of these tactics in order to win, as well as causing black to waste precious time going all the way down to c2. And here we use opposition to promote. Now, what if the black king decided to go defend his own pawn by playing king to c6? Well now, white simply cuts off the square with e5, black moves to d6, white to f6, 
and now Black has no time to stop the capture or draw the game by playing an opposition. I hope you enjoyed and learned from this puzzle, and even though it seemed very simple at first glance, this proves an excellent point as to why studying end games is just as important as studying openings and mid games. If you found this video useful, you can help the channel by liking or subscribing, and if you'd like to see something in the future, please do not hesitate by leaving a comment down below, and we'll make it happen. Now keep your kings safe and your pawns pushing. This has been Chess Crafters. Thanks for watching.